Well, good afternoon, everyone, and, and welcome to this uh, very significant event, which we have entitled the Australian Labor Party Significant Funding Announcement for the Indian Business and Community Diaspora. Can I just thank you for this very short notice in which you've come here today? I appreciate it. Um, it's, it's come together pretty well. So it's now my, my great privilege to introduce our two federal members, and then I'll ask Shane to make his announcement. I'll start with Shane. Now, Shane was born and raised in Ipswich. He lives at Flinders View with his wife, Carolyn, and his two adult daughters. He commenced his working life at the Dinmore Meatworks. He completed his education at the University of Queensland with a law degree and an arts degree majoring in government and economics. He's a partner in a successful law firm before being elected to the federal seat of Blair in November 2007. He was re-elected in 2010, 2013, 2016 and 2019. And in March 2013, Shane was appointed Parliamentary Secretary of the Attorney General and Parliamentary Secretary for Health and Ageing. After the 23 election, he was appointed Shadow Minister for Indigenous Affairs and for Ageing. In 2016, he was appointed Shadow Minister for Immigration and Border Protection, and following the 29th federal election, was appointed Shadow Minister for Veterans Affairs and Defence Personnel. Shane has a deep commitment to an understanding of health, Indigenous affairs and infrastructure issues. He's committed to an industrial relations system that gives working families in his electorate of Blair and, and throughout Queensland fair workplaces. Can I also acknowledge Shane's effort in the creation of Health City, particularly in getting oncology into Health City, which is a move, which is a really a very important uh, event that leads to the growth of Health City today. And it, uh, without Shane's help there, it would have been extremely difficult to achieve. So I then also would now like to acknowledge Milton. Milton grew up and went to school on the south side of Brisbane and lives locally in the electorate of Oxley. Prior to being elected the federal member for Oxley, Milton served as the Brisbane City Councillor for Richlands Ward from 20, 2008 to 2016 and was elected the Brisbane City Council Leader of Opposition in 2012. Locally, as many of you know, Milton is a proud patron of many local sporting community and service clubs. One of his top priorities for Oxley is further improving the education and training opportunities for kids. In Parliament, Milton serves on several committees, including the Joint Committee on Electoral Matters. Milton prides himself on always being there to help people, no matter how big or small the issue may be. Milton is also focused on securing the right infrastructure needed to help the community grow. That's a great introduction to two of our federal members here. So without further ado, we, we now have the exciting moment to see what is this announcement, election commitments that are going to happen, and they're all waiting to see. So with, without further ado, I'll ask uh, Shane Newman to come to the podium and make these announcements. Well, thanks, thanks, Jim, and I want to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land upon which we meet and pay my respects to Elders past, present and emerging. Um, I recognise many friends around the room from, uh, from of course, uh, Ash and Mimish and, of course, Rainer and Kalani and, and, of course, Amaha. And I just, the plenty of people that, that Milton and I have met with, and Nick as well, met with and dealt with in the uh, in Indian communities around, uh, around Brisbane and Ipswich. And we thank you for the contribution you make. You enrich our lives, you make our, our, our country a better place in which to live. And, uh, and we are deeply indebted to, for your friendship and your support. Uh, these announcements that Milton and I are making today will make a difference, we believe, in the lives of people in decades to come. Plenty of times as a politician you get up and you make commitments and you think that that'll be a good thing. But these two commitments today I know will change people's lives. They'll change people's lives because they will enrich our multicultural community, but they'll also create jobs. And I want to thank you and the various groups uh, that Jim referred to, uh, from the Federation of Indian Communities of Queensland, uh, GOPA of course, and we, of course we've got the Indian, Australian Indian Business Council for the work that they've done. Um, I want to thank particularly Springfield City Group, because without Springfield City Group, these commitments today that Milton and I are announcing would not have been made. Um, so I am very much uh, indebted and we express our deep gratitude to Springfield City Group 
for the great communitarian spirit that Maha, Bob, Rayner and Jim and the whole team uh, have made for our community. So the announcement that Milton and I are, are making and uh, are these, and I'll get Milton to speak after, after I could, I'm going to take the floor, Jim, and give, hand it over to Milton as well. <laughs> okay. So the first, the first commitment that we're making is that we are making a commitment of $3.5 million towards the building costs of India House in Springfield. <laughs> we, for too long, can I say, uh, Australians have generally thought of India as cricket in the Commonwealth, and it's a lot more than that. And, and we feel that with over 50,000 people from the Indian community living in the south, uh, southeast Queensland, we think it's so important that India House be established because that will be a place to meet, meet and connect. Uh, not the least of which will have seven to 800 people able to be use, using facility here in Springfield and can imagine the benefit not just for the Indian communities generally, but for the wider community of Ipswich, Springfield and Brisbane as well. So thank you very much for that. Um, I want to also make an announcement as well uh, that uh, an Albany Leisure Labor government will invest $12.5 million in the biotech firm Cytiva to grow manufacturing of high-valued medicines in the Ipswich and Springfield area. <laughs> so again, this would not have happened without the brilliant work of uh, Springfield City Group and the work that they have done. Uh, this commitment is about high-tech manufacturing. There will be 500 direct jobs created. We are talking here about the production of raw materials in key uh, biologic drugs and therapies, including vaccines, antibodies, proteins, mRNA, gene and cell therapies. And how appropriate is that now when we've been going through a pandemic? So that's, uh, I don't know whether Springfield City Group have a prophetic aspect to their business model, but they have been on this case for quite a while. So an Albanese Labor government will do it and we'll establish this over here in Springfield. So that's a terrific announcement that Labor will undertake should we be elected. And with those few words, I'll hand it over to my good friend Milton Dick who can talk further about it, because these announcements would not have happened without the collaboration and cooperation of Milton and I together. We take seriously our teamwork in this whole corridor. Uh, we feed off one another and communicate with one another and plan everything together across the Springfield, Southwest Brisbane and Ipswich area. Uh, and, and I think we do a pretty reasonable job and I hope uh, that my good mate Milton gets re-elected on Saturday as well as myself. I hand it over to Milton. Thank you, Shane, and um, good afternoon, everyone. It's such a pleasure and privilege to be with you all, and may I too start by acknowledging the traditional owners on the land of which we gather and pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. Can I thank the leaders of the Indian community that have joined us today, not only for turning up today, but for your continuing ongoing leadership in our wider community, representing a diverse community with 50,000 people who were born overseas. No two days are the same as the federal member for Oxley. You hear different stories and different understandings of where people have come from, why they've come here and what they're doing. And there can be no greater success story than people from India who've come to Australia as, success multi as successful multicultural advice, information and the way that people have created a better Australia. And that's because our countries are, I think, uniquely linked the great love of democracy. We're celebrating democracy over the next five days here in this country. But we're also celebrating common bonds in terms of business, trade, people to people, how we conduct ourselves. So the, the, the countries between Australia and India have a unique bond. And I think that bond can be strengthened. So not only do we commit to that bond going forward, and advocating and representing on behalf of the community as Shane and I have done. This investment, which I want to particularly acknowledge Jim Varghese for his tireless advocacy, I said to Jim and the chairman on the way in, well, this is probably the only election commitment in Australia that is absolutely guaranteed. <laughs> on May 22nd, <laughs> Australian India House will be built. <laughs> So you've done a remarkable 
Joel, and I always say the best announcements are always done in a bipartisan spirit. The community has worked hard for this. This is your announcement. This is your celebration. We're the lucky people that get to, I guess, be part of it. But I want to acknowledge all of the advocacy, the hard work. We said it was between 15 years, but I reckon it's longer 20 years that this project has been in the making. And I think that's testament to the patience, but also the advocacy. I want to thank Shane in particular for his hard work. Shane was elected 15 years ago, and he hasn't stopped working, I think, every single day since he was elected. He's been a terrific mentor, and I've watched in awe of how he conducts himself in a professional, but in a very serious way. And becoming a member of federal parliament and representing communities, and having the responsibility of being in government or in opposition is an enormous responsibility. And it's something I've learned from Shane that we take very, very seriously. There are a lot of issues at stake at this election, where our country is headed, but I'm confident with the right set of values and plans and listening and understanding Shane that I'll continue to hopefully advocate and represent. The business announcement that Shane has mounted today is significant probably one of the largest election commitments that we've made to foster the health sector to grow and achieve, particularly in advanced manufacturing, <coughs> is really critical. Uh, the chairman and the Sinathambi family, and I want to acknowledge Raina and Uma that are here today, have laid out that vision for our community. And now, as the representatives across all levels of government, it's our job to make sure that vision is implemented. I was in this room maybe a month ago, three weeks ago, with a health summit here, talking about advanced manufacturing, talking about that is the future, about biotechnology, med technology, pharmaceuticals. You know, this community in this area can go to the next level. And it's because of that vision we're able to enable to do these things. So I thank you, Chairman, for your belief in this community and the support that you've given to other communities as well. It is truly a partnership, and that is the signature of the Springfield City Group. I also want to acknowledge Councillor Paul Tully, who's always here supporting the community as one of our representatives. And I do pass on the best wishes and support of Mrs. Cherise Mullen, who's currently representing the government in Cairns today at a, a large business event. And I know she was, I did break confidence and tell her, Jim, this was probably the worst kept secret <laughs> in Australia. But she is absolutely delighted and looks forward to this project becoming uh, to fruition. So it is, friends, it is with great privilege to stand before you and to welcome this announcement, to thank you all for your service and support, and I certainly look forward to working alongside of you, and that's something that I've learned from Shane. We don't work, I guess, with you, we work alongside for you as well, to make sure that every step we take is together. So thank you very much for your support, I look forward to India House, no matter what happens on May <laughs> 21, becoming a reality, long overdue, well welcomed, and they will be much loved in our community. Thank you very much. Well, isn't that an outstanding applause? Give them a, give them a round of applause. Can I now ask the uh, chairman and of Springfield City Group to address us? Now, Maha Sinathambi is well known to all of us here in the Indian diaspora. I've been a long-standing supporter way back 30 years ago when we established the Federation. And in fact, it was the member for Oxley called Pauline Hanson that inspired us to form FICQ. <laughs> 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 so I, I just thought, I just thought for the member of history, you might want to remember that. So, so with with without uh, Mahas, of course, uh, the patron of uh, FICQ and Gopio, long-standing champion for the Indian diaspora, and of course, you know, he's a donor of land. He and his business partner Bob Sharpers, and it's worth six million dollars, which is a very generous contribution. So I'll ask now uh, Mahasena Thambi to address us. So.
Thank, thank you very much, Jim. And to, first of all, I acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we gather, the elders past, present, and future, and the great contribution they have made to this great country. Also, I'd like to acknowledge my two fellow members here, very close friends of ours. We work them very hard sometimes. She <laughs> 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 Newman. And, and <clears throat> we, all the work that you have done in terms of having to bring the cancer unit here. And can I remind you, my good friend, today's paper says that there is going to be the, the most advanced form of cancer care that's going to happen. And I think you have set the space that it might happen here at Springfield. So we just, if there's anybody who's going to make it, it's these two gentlemen here. <laughs> And all the work, hard work that Milton Dick has done, I think when you get one, you get these two gentlemen together for the same price. <laughs> <laughs> the friends, can I also acknowledge all the distinguished mes members here? Jim has asked me to only just mention a couple of others, but I've got a friend here. Where is my friend, uh, the, the chairman of planning? Paul Tully, yeah, Paul Tully. Now, this, this gentleman has to be recognized because can I say when about 20 years ago when the planning approval had to be done at council, he could have stopped it. But he supported it. And to you, I salute you, Paul, and uh, you've done an amazing job. And, and he has always been very helpful in trying to get this city going. Friends, I say this to you, that when this land was donated, it was definitely donated so that its neighbor is a council's, council's headquarters, council's uh, area of activity. And so the council activities and India House are side by side. That shows that from a planning point, we are all one. That community hall, that council will be the one who is going to manage, and I know Paul Tully was behind that. <laughs> it's something that we ought to see get started, because that being adjacent to India House is going to be a very, very unique experience, not only for the Indian community, but to the wider community, and to the whole region. And this is a, 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 an achievement that cannot be repeated anywhere else. I haven't seen this anywhere in this country where the community hall and India House or China House or whatever it is, can be side by side. Friends, in moving forward, can I also say that we are committed to truly creating a cohesive society, a society that is based on equality and understanding of each other's cultures. There is no question that India-Australia relationship is getting stronger and stronger and stronger every day. We have a population, Indian population, of around about 750, maybe going to 800. But as I said to Jim the other day and to his brother, that in 10 years' time, we will have about 2.5 million. And that will have a major influence on the political part of what's going to happen to this country. And by that time, I know most of us would have integrated and mixed up in what it is. But it will be a great, great society. What a great, rich country we will have. I take this opportunity also to thank the two federal members for their support for the manufacturing of all medical products in here. We are taking a lead here. In the country, we are taking a very strong lead that the manufacturing of all health products will happen here at Springfield. Health City, as you know, is 52 hectares. And at the moment, as you know, Marta has plans for a 1,200-bed hospital. 1,200-bed hospital does not exist anywhere in this country. So it's an amazing health precinct. And with Shane Newman talking about possibly me talking to him about having the facilities for cancer care, which the government has promised, it was announced by the federal government, that it will be at least $32, billion, $32 million. And the state-of-the-art building for cancer care. We will be naturally putting our hands up for the right reason that this is the place it should be. 
So with all that, can I say that things are going to move very, very fast from now on for Springfield as a city. And it's the only city that has been built since Federation in this country other than Canberra. And there were two attempts, as I've said, to bring a city, that's all Brigodonga and the multifunction police, they both failed. So this one has been going on for 30 years. Watch the space. You've got another 80 years to live to watch this finish off. Thanks very much for coming. Have a wonderful day. Thanks very much, uh, Maha, for that. And um, I just thought before I go to the next speaker, I might ask um, Dustin Welch, who's our general manager for health, to just tell us what this Cytiva is, because I know some of you here have asked, we, we, I can note from your expression, you're asking what it is. Hand over to you. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Chairman, and thank you, uh, Shane Newman and Milton Dick. Um, what this contribution is, or this commitment of 12 and a half million is, is the unlocking of the sovereign capability of Australia in advanced manufacturing, and it's occurring right here on our doorstep. Springfield Biopark partnership with Cytiva, which is a Danaher company, a multinational company, offices in the uh, United States, uh, Southern America, UK, Europe, Europe and India. Um, with terrific links into Australia as a result of this commitment, uh, will produce over the course of its uh, lifespan, uh, as Shane mentioned, up to 500 jobs. It'll unlock a private investment of up to $188 million over the three stages and give us a capability the likes of which we currently do not have in this country. So we applaud this commitment and are incredibly grateful that it is coming here to Springfield. Thank you. And now it's time to uh, invite some of our community leaders to share perspective with us. And let me start uh, with uh, Professor Prasad, Yaraglada Prasad, who I introduced before is the AIHCF president. He's also a mover and shaker, he moves around a lot. Yeah. And he's also, he's also a professor at QUT. So over to you, Prasad. Thanks, Jim, for that. I also would like to start with the by acknowledging traditional owners of the land on which we're meeting. Also express my uh, since it attitude to the elders of the past, present, and emerging. Uh, Honorable Shane Newman, Honorable Milton Dick, and uh, our good friend Paul, Councillor Paul Tully, the chairman, and uh, I mean, I refer him as a pattern of GoPio and, and pattern of a face rather than chairman of Springfield, Dr. Mahasana Thambi, because he's more important for us, he is a pattern for us rather than chairman. And uh, community leaders, uh, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. My name is Prasad Arlagata. I'm a president of the Australian India Charitable Foundation. Uh, and uh, this morning, indeed, it is a wonderful news uh, to see this announcement from Australian Labour Party. Uh, thank you very much for that, uh, Shane Newman and Mr. Dick, for the support for this one. Uh, the Indian diaspora, I mean, on behalf of the Indian diaspora, I would like to thank you and the Australian Labour Party for this great initiative to support the Australian India House. Uh, this initiative by Honorable Antonio Albanese's team demonstrates the Australian Labour Party's commitment to supporting the Indian diaspora in Australia. We may request you all to show our appreciation for the wonderful support to Indian diaspora uh, as a pre election commitment by the Australian Labour Party. Please join me. <laughs> I mean, previous speakers did mention a little bit about Indian community growing up. I'll give a little bit of background of this project as well. Uh, I mean, since early 1970, migration of people to in Indian origin to Queensland is going up and up. Now we are having approximately 70,000 people in Queensland, out of which around 50,000 people in this part of the uh, uh, corner of the Queensland. Uh, in addition, India is the second largest uh, uh, trading partner with Queensland, and also we have a large number of international students coming from India, which, which education is uh, one of the Queensland become one of the major educational providers for the Indian continent. And also Indian businessmen, businesses are investing in mining operations in Queensland. And also, also Australia-India economic ties are 
healthy and increasing activities at both the state and federal levels, uh, which, which further strengthening our businesses between the two great nations. In addition to, um, of course, cricket is always one there, historically for decades, but other, we are developing in other areas as well. Uh, I mean, you all, all of you know and definitely agree with me that the Indian culture and heritage is one of the oldest in the world. Uh, migrants of Indian, and uh, Indian migrants would like to maintain their culture and heritage while at the same time uh, promoting seamless integration with the wider Australian society. Uh, this significantly adds to the rich multicultural flavor of Australia and Queensland. Hence, Indian communities working together to establish a home or uh, to realize their dream through the Australia House. I mean, as uh, Milton rightly pointed out, this project has been started 20 years ago, or previous predecessors of FSUQ leaders, some of them are not here today. Dr. Naidu is here, Dr. Surinder Prasad, Dr. Naji Majumdar, all the, and Umesh, a number of group of the people were behind this. It took us a while, but please remember, this is not the project for today, not for tomorrow. This is a project going to last for next 500 years. So we would like to see a very strong foundation. That's the reason why, in spite of the fact that Dr. Mahasanathamy was telling us there is a land, take it and do something, we were not rushing through because we would like to have a strong foundation in which it will last for next 500 years. Uh, on this occasion, may I also sincerely thank Dr. Mahasanathamy uh, 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 and uh, Mr. Bob Shapples, the deputy chairman of Springfield City Group, unfortunately was not here today, for the current support and commitment to Indian diaspora and also in particular to Australia in the house project. Uh, they initially pledged a, a block of land in, in, uh, in the, which is very close to the region here, but they realized that the exponential growth of the community here, accordingly the growing needs of the community increasing, and hence they recently indicated that they will be considering to support this project with uh, a big block of land worth of $6 million, as Jim mentioned before. Um, please join me in thanking Dr. Maha and Mr. Bob and his team for their outstanding support to me as well. In particular, last year in India forward. To conclude, I strongly believe that Australia and India House will bring all the Queensland Indian communities and business organizations together to reach out and engage with the wider community. This multi facility of Australia and India House will serve diverse needs of Queensland multicultural communities to host arts and cultural events, festivals of national significance, educational programs, and others. Before I conclude, I would like to wish our both uh, Honorable Milton Dick and Honorable Shane Newman all the best with, uh, with these elections. I'm sure they're going to win, I know. But still, I would like to wish, <laughs> wish you all best from our thing, from our end. And uh, we would like to work with you and under guidance from chairman and uh, other community leaders uh, to establish Australia India House in years to come and also work, and work with you on matters of mutual interest. Thank you very much. I'm jealous of I'd like now to call on uh, Nick Senapathy, who is the president of the Queensland chapter of the Australian India Business Council. Over to you. I am Nick Senapathy. Um, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land we're on as well. And uh, to Shane Newman and Milton Dick, thank you very much for your announcements. Uh, AIBC, uh, along with the community, uh, other Indian community leaders, uh, we work together. This is, uh, is, is, I think it's very important that we are a team. We all pull together. And uh, I think uh, the, uh, where we are today is because of that teamwork that we've been able to, uh, to um, demonstrate. Yeah. So uh, Australia India Business Council fully supports both these uh, um, announcements, uh, one from the Australia India House, um, the, uh, the India House project is the, that it's going to have business associated with it as well. So it's going to be a center where businesses, uh, uh, people can come in and, and, uh, and talk about business, etc. So it's an important part of, of uh, the Australia India business um, community because our, we, our only measure is when we, when Australia and India's trade increases, that's when the IBC is successful. So that's our only real measure. Yeah? And Queensland, in fact, is 
the largest trading partner with India of any of the states in Australia. So having an India house here, and hopefully one day uh, uh, a council that uh, a diplomatic council that is full time Queensland based will be important as well. Yeah. The other uh, aspect of the uh, medical uh, and research, uh, the uh, manufacturing is that um, we have a chapter in uh, the AIBC of health. And uh, India is a huge uh, manufacturer of um, pharmaceuticals. And I think with this uh, multinational company forming this year, it will demonstrate to India and the Indian companies that there are opportunities here for Indian companies to come and uh, manufacture. And, and the research and the development that goes with that is important. So education, uh, research, and development ties into it as well. So thank you very much, and uh, an exciting time ahead, and good luck for the next week. <laughs> thank you very much. Nick, Nick there was referring to Dr. Tanya Uni, who actually lives in the Gold Coast. Yeah. And she's our National Industry Chair for, for Health, and, and you're quite right. It's a great opportunity, marketing opportunity. In fact, I should say that our Sydney chapter has got very excited about this event, okay. and I'm going to be stirring up the ALP in New South Wales. <laughs> Can I now call on uh, Ramon and uh, Robin Jagasaka, the Secretary of AIHCF, to share their perspectives. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Jim. Oh, just the last three weeks, I tried to work with Jim. I don't know where the energy comes to uh, he got, you know, so he called me 10 o'clock, morning 6 o'clock, you know, you can see that, uh, how, how he played a role in advocacy of that. Please give me hands to him and see that I join you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, before I begin, I acknowledge the traditional owners of the land of which we meet upon today. I pay my respects to their elders, past, present, and emerging. My name is Ram Morgan. Um, prospective Vice President of the Australia India uh, House Charitable Foundation and also representing Mr. Anup Nanuru, President of the Federation of Indian Communities of Queensland. First, I thank uh, each and every one of you who accept the uh, invitation to attend this function at uh, such a short notice. And thanks um, Shandy Manepi and then uh, good friend uh, uh, Bill Tindy for this uh, federal labor announcement. Thank you so much for this. As Professor Prasad mentioned, the Australia India House was a dream project of Indian communities in Queensland. My role is to bring all the Queensland Indian communities, corporate businesses, and non profit organizations to, to bring them together to build this dream project. This multi purpose Australia India House will uh, serve the diverse needs of Queensland Indian and multicultural communities to host the cultural festivals of national significance and the educational and language programs. My focus is to seek your support and of course asking money and to contribute as a usual or a business or organization of non-profit organization. We have a good plan for the fundraising. I share most of there are only five points here. So membership is the one. We are open for 150 foundation members now. And uh, Mr. Robin will explain the membership in detail. And uh, please contact us if you pledge your support. Also, the grants, we applied for the uh, federal funding, also in the process of applying state and uh, local uh, government as well. So, in fact, we have a meeting scheduled next week with the uh, council. A sponsorship, of course, we have identified a few uh, big sponsors and minor sponsors, uh, including possible naming rights. In kind support, we seek the support from all the businesses in terms of a pro bono, uh, you know, for the businesses, legal, accounting, IT, marketing, public relations, auditing, and uh, many, many kind of in kind support. We will take that as well. And we also um, look at conducting special events for fundraise, uh, entertainment through cultural events, Bollywood nights, dance, music, and fundraise run, etc. The last one, merchandising, uh, clothing, 
office products, sports products, and glassware for selling online and social media. Thanks, everyone, and uh, good luck with this, both of you. Thank you. Thanks, Maya. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Robin. Uh, thank you for a wonderful and enormous gesture. We've been working on India House now uh, tirelessly for the past three years, trying to see how we will make this a reality um, for the Indian and broader community. So many of us in the room are not from India. Um, I think some of us are from Africa. Right? But we still want to make India House a dream for, for everybody. Um, with that said, we had a lot of hurdles and we were wondering how we're going to put the structure up without the money and the community support. And thanks to your support today, we look at seeing there is a light at the end of the tunnel and there's a vision. In Everyone who came up here talked about collaboration and how communities work together and how industry and partners and you know Springfield Land Corporation and government works. And it is our our intent to work with everybody, to bring everybody on board, and no one's left behind. No community, no religion, no uh, uh, community sector is left behind in India Project. Because India Project is about educating the broader community, educating people who don't know what India is about. Not only do we see cricket and Bollywood movies, there's a huge amount of other bits and pieces that Indian community can bring to our local in environment. Um, besides the business opportunities, the immigration opportunities, the students that come here uh, sightless to, to our country and you know flounder around, we have an opportunity to build and put some uh, structures in place so they know where to go, where to find people, how to get into contact with people, etc. I wouldn't have babbled along very quickly. In terms of our membership, in terms of inclusive, we will be looking at, and this is when before announcements like this kind of money had come around, we had envisioned that we needed about 150 people to donate $10,000 each as foundation members. So that will give us a pretty big petty cash to start the foundation work for the project. And the foundation work at the time was to be piecemealed as the funds came in. With the announcements today that is made, we will still keep to our foundation members we're hoping to, to generate 150 foundation members. And I can see this being a success because now that the people know that the money is available, they know that the land is available, they know that the project can take place, people wouldn't be sitting back and say, you know what, we do not want to get now involved. So we are open for business as of probably next Monday, um, where we can start to say, let's start getting the shoulders to the wheel and we will be calling on all the community groups to put that shoulder to the wheel. Um, we will be targeting at least 10 or 12 industrial businesses. So we've got the biggest one, Springfield Land Corporation, and thank you very much, Maha, again. And we'll be looking at other donors around, whether it be Meals for Wheels, whether it be uh, you know, a, a Men's Shed, whether it be Salvation Army, wherever our services are going to be aimed at, this is not a place only for entertainment, or not a place only for weddings and functions. It's a place to conserve the community as well. Um, we, we'll be looking to other people around for other works to donate time in civil infrastructure, civil landscaping, in terms of uh, interior design, and those kind of works that can be donated to the project without it being a huge cost to the project. Uh, we'll be looking to raise other funds around uh, people who want to donate the time for administrative work, gardeners on an ongoing basis, and so forth. So we'll be coming to the community, we'll be having engagement to the community, and we'll be looking at you as the leaders of the community to go back and instill those values in your members. With that, I say thank you again, and you will be hearing from us as in your Thank you very much. much. Okay, we're now going to, we will finish on time, of course. We're now going to have a, a more informal session. I thought, not so far, tell you, of course. Um, this will be a bit of a, a Q&A so that, you know, yeah. we can sort of...
once it gets speech test, it's much easier to get rid of it, right? Mm -hmm. Looking around. So let's, um, I'll start, start with you, Paul, Paul, Paul and each other, we've known each other for a long time, a long time. <laughs> 1966. <laughs> so, so Paul, you've been, you've been uh, supporting India House for, for quite a while, and of course that announcement, you, you'd be you know, into that in a big way. What is your perspective on all of this now? Yeah, it's a, it was mentioned that it's very close by me. Uh, for those of you who don't know, it's on the other side of the couple of roundabouts you go down to Mount Julia Rat Drive. Mount Julia Rat Drive actually still exists at the far end of Red Bank Plains, and I think the positioning of India House is so good. It's near the Centenary Highway, it's very close to Logan City, um, it's close to Brisbane, close to the uh, heart of Ipswich. You've picked a very, very good location, I think it's fantastic and um, it'll bring uh, a lot of enterprise to our local community. And Maha mentioned the, the whole Springfield development goes back to 1995 when this area here was not in Ipswich, it was in a council called Mortonshire. And the Mortonshire was dealing with the, the Springfield uh, plan at that stage, the amalgamation election took place, and the first thing that the new council had to consider, the new Ipswich City Council, was the Springfield development. And uh, it is true, um, Maha put it in an in inelegant way that I could have stopped it. I wasn't thinking about that because I remember <laughs> the day of the special meeting, we did have a couple of councillors who had a couple of spurious reasons to try to stop the uh, development. One was that there were a couple of uh, rusty, this is true, a couple of rusty paint cans found in one of the creeks here. But uh, the meeting started at nine o'clock, by two o'clock, um, I was thinking this could go on for a bit night. So for those of you who are familiar with um, meeting procedures, we moved that the motion be put. That was carried within about 15 seconds. The motion was put and carried, and that's how Springfield started. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Well, as we now have the announcement, I'll ask uh, Milton and Shane a very simple question. What would you like to see more of from the Indian community here? Well, I'm, I'm very interested in, in the social inclusion aspect of India House. Um, I think the com building community, the very large Indian community and other communities in Springfield, um, for multi-faith backgrounds. So I'd like to see building social capital. Um, I think that's it's underdone. Uh, my, my, my cryptic joke before about Commonwealth and cricket is, is, is quite apt because for a long time people didn't realise that, that they didn't realise the, the number of people because only about 50,000 or more Indian people from uh, living in South East Queensland. Uh, whereas if we go, I think, it, I think uh, I said very much it was that, that 750,000 or 800,000. So I think that what we're going to see is a migration of the Indian community. And as we deepen our ties with India, I think we're going to see more and more people flow as well. So I think building social capital as well. I think Nick's right. The business community, that will come, but it's a social capital aspect which I'm very keen on. Yeah. I think, Jim, the, the thing for me is India House, and you're forgetting one thing, Shane, Commonwealth Cricket and Curry, the three seeds. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I think having a permanency or to drive innovation and to drive investment, for me, that's what I really want to see. You know, I've spoken about this quite a lot about advanced manufacturing and medical technology. You know, we touched on that today with a brand new hospital being built here with, you know, future expansions of the investments that have been made today. Making Springfield as the destination, as the, the choice, particularly for our neighbours and our friends to have that increase in trade. I, I was privileged to go to India on my first trip to India on a parliamentary delegation in 2018, the first one to go there in 15 years. And on that trip, as luck would happen, the leader of the delegation, who wasn't the leader then, was Anthony Albanese. Oh, so it was his first trip. It was myself, David Little Brown, Little Brown, who was elected with me from the government in 2016, who's now the Agricultural Minister. He wasn't then. And Senator Pauline Hanson. There's been a theme around <laughs> And little old me. Um, and I had to be to... What's that? Taj The big one with the photo. Yes. Um, there was a good photo of us with Taj Mahal, but that's another story with Pauline Hanson, but I'll keep that for later. Um, that was funny. Um, 
and, and having that as dialogue and that relationship of people wanting to understand and invest in Australia and having a place like India House, which I see as a bit of a beacon for investment and a, 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 a lightning rod for people to come to Australia and actually set up those business arrangements, I think will be a huge long-term investment, not only for this region, but I'll say for the whole of Australia. Every other city has an India House. You know, what tipped me over the edge was when I, when I heard other states have had it and we didn't. That's mm. just outrageous. So to have that now, I reckon it will even take us to that next level. Thanks very much. In fact, somebody asked me what the hell is India House here? Because when I thought they said it's a more sophisticated version of the Greek Club. <laughs> and uh, I got a very good response to that. <laughs> better, better curry. Better. Now, I'm going to finish this off with a very simple question. I'll start with you, Paul. What is your favourite curry and your and your favourite Indian cricket? Don't just start with me because I can't name one uh, uh, Indian cricketer. Um, but I, can I just say this? I've lived in this community here at Augusta Heights for 11 years now, just after the flood. We lost our home at uh, Goodna. And one thing that amazed me was the number of Indian people. A lot of people are out walking in the mornings. So myself and my colleague, Councillor Johnny, we've got a little place in mind for a community cricket oval down in Augusta Heights. It's the old Redneck Plains Goodna Pony Club. Now, I'm sure that will be a magnet for the Indian community. Um, we don't want the kids to get yeah, too professional about it. They might come back, start and you know, play for India and uh, beat us in the future. As for curries, I think I like all of them. And uh, going for <laughs> favourite one? No, no, I've got a favourite one. Oh, maybe a lamb curry. Maybe a lamb, lamb curry, yeah. yeah. But 1966, I just want to say this. I know we're going to finish our time. James uh, and his family had come from India via Newcastle come to Brisbane. Um, I was at uh, Gregory Terrace in Brisbane uh, then, and that's when I first met James, and that's uh, a pretty long you know, sort of time. I've got to say, and can I look around, I think we can be a little bit uh, politically incorrect. Within about three months, a few of our kids were talking and saying, this new guy here come from Newcastle, the bastard knows everything, he's always <laughs> right. <laughs> so, so I think since 1966 he hasn't changed, but we've, we've formed a friendship and it, it's been pretty good. And uh, James eventually ended up with the Springfield City Group and we worked together pretty well over the years, James. Thanks. Thanks very much. Probably a doll. That's what I would <laughs> That's the, but it can't be too spicy, but it can't be too mild either. It's got to be the right, it's got to be that right, you know, when it just hits you, it's, it's, it gets you, but it's not uncomfortable. So I'm trying over the years to get a bit better with my palate. I've got a lot of friends who very kindly make me a lot of curries, drop them around to the office or whatever, but the dal would be my absolute favorite. Yeah, I was going to say the same, but I'll eat him with nagari. Oh, you with the bread, anything. I hate to say that, I'm just, I am just. I actually see go for the bread first, you know, and, and I just see it and just and mop it up, of course. I love I love that experience where you just drag the bread through, and it's just, it, 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 and I just love it. And you drag it through, and you pick up the rice, and especially with the vegetables, I like it at doing it at, uh, at the data center. And you drag it through, and you just bring it up, and you put it in your mouth. There's something very human about it. I love it. <laughs> That's now I'm just hungry. <laughs> <laughs> so we can wrap up the session. Can I just mention two cricketers that I'll, I'll let them know they need more marketing? So we'll get us a No, I yeah, session yeah, to do. We did not. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. That's right. That's fine. Give them all a round of applause. Yeah. Yeah. Now, we, now we're going to get the Indian community leaders here. So if you'd like to go to the thing there, and if I could call upon the stage here, come in. I should talk to Mishra. Ask them what pizza they like. What pizza they like. Recruit the Basu. Naidu Kosta. Kapi. Umesh Chandra. And Robin Jagasaka. Raina, would you like to come? Yeah. All right. Can I uh, welcome our Indian Hashito? You're supposed to come here. <laughs> What's in here? What the hell is going on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Now, no Indian communities function can happen without this kind of connectivity. 
a recognition. So if I could ask each of our people, just a short statement on what is your aspiration for India Hunts. Short chat, then we've got a very short time frame. So I'll start with Naida on the far right. It's the harmony that we're looking for, harmony of uh, um, Indians who are wherever they came from. And this is going to uh, give them the harmony and uh, to be together as one group. Excellent. And I think I echo that sentiment as well. And I think Shane touched on that the social inclusion. And very uh, recently we had a seminar where we touched on that social inclusion. Because many times we get branded, said, you know, he's not from India, he's, you know, uh, and uh, as Robin has mentioned, that we have come from many different nations, but we carry that Indianness and that value. So it must be inclusive, it must include everyone, and that mentality needs to change, that he's from, you know, regardless of the country or where. There are people who might be born in Australia, but they still have the Indian values. Uh, first, I would like to thank uh, uh, Mr. Jim and Uncle Maha for continuing to support this mission. But uh, the more import most importantly, uh, the Labour Party uh, future Albanese uh, Labour government and the potential ministers, Shane Newman and also Milton Dick, for coming forward to commit this uh, $3.5 million projects here to help Indian Community House. And often, when we are looking at the Indian community house, it is not going to cater for the just local community. It is going to cater for the whole southeast Queensland. We can expand, but sometimes um, that is the beauty of Indian India community house is going to be built here. And India is the diverse country with various faith and uh, culture, as Omeji said. People are from different parts of the world they still have a cultural and faith connection with India. They continue to um, identify themselves with the person of Indian origin. That is the beauty of this. And thank you, we are going to be excited. This is going to be only possible uh, when the new government is going to be elected. So I'm looking forward to see that future uh, government uh, with uh, Minister Shane Newman and also Milton. Thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you, Jim. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's, a, it's a blooming delight and uh, a very proud moment for me uh, to be here uh, with the joints of the Indian community who have inspired me for the last 15 years since I moved to this country. It's an honor to be amongst them today. And uh, over the years, I have, I have uh, heard a lot of uh, 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 perspectives on India House and on behalf of the leaders who have been pushing this, I want to quickly cite this in the couplet. Which means we started alone towards our destination, but soon we found that there were people joining us, and soon there was a massive caravan and a procession. Now there are thousands and thousands with us. So this is how they all started, and that is how they inspire all of us. Jim, for, for me, um, India House goes beyond uh, communities. India House symbolizes the universal values that India enshrines, that is of Vasudev Kutumbukam, that the world is one family. And when you see the world as a family, everyone is included into it. And I think in this country, every single Indian, no matter where he comes from, any part of the world, symbolizes that universal belief. Nation building remains uh, an ongoing process, and the establishment of the Australian India House is a major step in taking that nation building forward in this country. And I think it is also simple that Indian community has come of age, and it wants to roll up the sleeves and play more meaningful role in building this city, this state, and this country. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jean. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's really my privilege to be here and to give two cents of my thoughts. Basically, it's pretty much covered up with all these uh, learned men, but the point it really got me on is, irrespective of problems I said, we all come from different country, and no matter what, we all have got a common element of culture. 
So I know Australia being a multicultural country has have been non-biased, they've always supported all the multicultural country, but what this space will do is give us the cultural background. We would feel much more belong. We can have the sense of, uh, you know, being connected. So that is an additional edge to it. And me being a mother of two children, I can see the future. As Prasadji said, it's not for today, it's not for tomorrow, it's for another 500 years to go. So the future generation does need this solid foundation for them to feel further belonged. So thank you so much and I really appreciate this amazing patients we all have helped and making it happen thanks to this wonderful political parties to be supporting us thank you again good afternoon everyone um everyone said the right words i i got just one line the preservation and sharing of the indian culture thank you very much and we'll wrap up with you know not allowed to do more than this i just want three words three words that sum up for you today, Jeffrey. Start with that. Encouraging, looking like a reality, and it will happen. Good. Coming together, I end up the reality, moving forward. Manufacturing in Queensland, <laughs> supporting communities, and then creating multicultural environment. Make Australia greater. <laughs> Great. Patience, perseverance, and belief. I say exciting, <laughs> moving forward, and it's like a tree lamp at Diwali. You know, we, we see... Three words, three words. <laughs> <laughs> okay, give them all a round of applause, everyone. Thank you. Say this, many people talk about uh, what this India House can do. My dream is one day we will see the two Prime Ministers holding bilateral talks in Australia and their house. Thank you. <laughs> if our panelists now could resume their seats, and I'm now going to ask our uh, vote of thanks, Dr. Indrani Ganguly, who's one of our great community leaders, to give a vote of thanks. So over to you. Thank you everyone. Uh, I'd just like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we are gathered here today, elders past, present and emerging. Um, as I've been listening to the project unfolding over the years and again hearing where we've come to today, um, there were two things that came to mind. There were two sayings that were drummed into me in school. One was great minds think alike and that is there are people who have the vision and who dare to dream. We had a song, a national song, saying, meaning, if no one hates you, start walking alone. <laughs> and the second one is, many hands make light work. Now, this has not been light work, but there have been many, many hands involved um, in this project. And I'd just like to thank every one of them. Um, starting with our political leaders, the Honourable Shane Newman, the Honourable Milton Dick, Councillor Paul Tully, and in absentia, Karis Mullen. I know her spirit is here with us, even if she's not here in the flesh. Uh, community le leaders, Dr. Mahasa Nath Hambi, who is very aptly named. For those who don't know, Maha means great, so going back to what I started with. Professor Prasad Yalagata. Dr. Ram Mohan, Nick Senapati, Palani Tevar, Ashutosh Mishra, um, Rena and Umar Senathambi, Umesh Chandra, Prakriti Maiso, um, some of the past presidents of FICQ like Dr. Bodapati Naidu, um, Surendra Prasad, Robin Jagesar. Um, I hope I haven't missed anyone, but I would also like to thank Sean Starr, who did the acknowledgement of country right in the beginning. Now, they say the Queen Bee rules, but the Queen Bee cannot survive without all the people, all the workers behind the scenes. So I'd like to start off by thanking Dr. Mr. Jim Varghis, who as usual did the stellar job as the MC, along with many other things. 
Uh, I'd like to thank Praveen Mulish, who has been responsible for making sure all the logistics were followed through and everything went smoothly. And all the other people behind the scenes, those who attended, those who've been providing the refreshments, those who guided us to where we need to go. And if I've missed out anyone inadvertently, please forgive my... And thank you all very much. And we look forward to the next uh, part of this journey. Thanks very much, Prabhupada. Thanks. Can I ask uh, Kritika, Praveen, uh, Prasad and Ram to come forward? The, the, this, this event um, was pretty challenging. There was only 48 hours to do it. Now, just think about that. 48 laps hours. And that's a great achievement. I uh, just, just want to give them a round of applause. <laughs> as we, as people said we couldn't finish our time, or they were wrong. But five minutes more to go. And can I just finish by saying that um, this has been a, a decade long journey for India Arts. And I look forward to consolidating the bipartisan support for Australian India trade, investment, and community relationships. The Satyabra announcement in the house, they're actually Siamese twins in many ways, it's community and business linking together. Uh, but I also appreciate the authentic engagement and friendship that I personally have had and all my colleagues have had with both sides of politics at the local, state, and federal level. And I'd like to conclude by saying I would like to encourage our diaspora here, and speaking as national chairs, our Indian diaspora throughout Australia, to appreciate inclusiveness, diversity, and the value of integrity at all times, especially participating currently in this very political electoral space. So thank you all. Thank you for coming at short notice. Enjoy the rest of the refreshments that are here. And give a big round of applause to all of us here.